Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to talk briefly about entitled capnography and how we can use that and apply that in our patient assessments. So first we have to understand what does capnography measure. It gives us a numeric value and it also gives us a waveform. And that numeric value is telling us how much carbon dioxide our patient is exhaling with each breath. Carbon dioxide is a byproduct of metabolism and we exhale it when our bodies are functioning appropriately as they should. Um, and it can tell us several things about what is going on with our patient. Um, so there are three things that end tidal measures. It measures ventilation. So how is our patient physically moving air in and out? It measures perfusion and it also measures metabolism. And we'll talk about these briefly. Um, so when you see a waveform show up on your monitor from the capno cannula or inline capno, this is actually an exhalation. So this is your patient breathing out and then the measure is taken from the highest point um, on that wave. So I want you guys to think about, um, for the purposes of simplicity, I want you to think of carbon dioxide as an acid. Okay, that is simplified, um, oversimplified. However, that really helps us to kind of figure out um, is our patient in a respiratory alkalosis or in the, are they in a respiratory um, acidosis? So our normal values for end tidal are 35 to 45, okay? If our values are lower than that, we may consider our patient to be in a respiratory alkalosis. And if our numbers are higher than that, we may consider them to be in an acidosis, which makes sense because if carbon dioxide is simplified, equated to an acid, if we have less acid, we're more alkalotic or more basic. If we have more acid, we're more acidotic, right? So what puts our patients on either ends of this, either end of this scale? Um, the first is respiratory rate. So this plays into it measuring ventilation, right? If our patient is breathing really fast, either on their own or we're bagging them too fast, they're breathing out more carbon dioxide. However, which with each breath, that carbon dioxide is more diluted. You can think of it as more watered down because there is more breath being exhaled. So if you have a patient that is having an anxiety attack, who is simply breathing fast from physical exertion, who's breathing fast from sepsis, then they're gonna be diluting the carbon dioxide that's coming out with each breath and their rate will be higher and their value will be lower, okay? So patients who are in a metabolic acidosis sometimes use this means to actually compensate for their situation. If you have a patient who is in diabetic ketoacidosis, they are metabolically acidotic. And one of the fastest ways that our body can get rid of acid is, to buy, is by breathing more of it off. So those patients will get those Kuzma's respirations that we're all familiar with, right? And they will try and breathe deeper, a little faster to get rid of more CO2 so that their pH in their body can come up and be less acidotic. But because they're breathing a little faster, more tidal volume, with each breath, their value is gonna be lower. Perfusion is necessary for our lungs to be able to off-gas that CO2, right? So CO2 is delivered to our lungs, to our alveoli, to those little cap through those little capillary beds, um, and it's released for us to breathe off. But if our little alveolar capillary beds aren't getting blood flow, how could we possibly release CO2 um, to breathe out? So anytime a patient is poorly perfused, it's possible for us to see a decrease in end tidal. And this applies to any type of shock. You could have a patient that is bleeding out, who's in cardiogenic shock. It doesn't matter if there is not enough blood flow globally in the body. Eventually there's not going to be enough blood flow to the lungs and we won't be able to release as much CO2. And finally, metabolism. So if you have a patient that is profoundly hypothermic, their metabolic rate may drop so low that they just don't have enough metabolism to off-gas um, the CO2 in their body. On the other end of the scale, we may have a decrease in respiratory rate that causes a respiratory acidosis. Good example of this is a narcotic overdose. You have a patient that overdosed on heroin or fentanyl, they're breathing four to six times a minute, 
their end title is going to be high because between all that time in between each breath, the CO2 in their lungs has more time to build up and get more and more concentrated. So if they're breathing 10, 15 seconds apart, they have 10, 15 seconds for all that CO2 to build up. And by the time they release it, our value is going to be higher. So that's a respiratory acidosis. Bronchospasm can also cause this. So if you have a severe asthmatic um, and their bronchospasm is progressing, they're going to start trapping more and more air. So while they can get a little bit of air in, they're not able to get that air out. So again, that CO2 builds up. And in those patients, you will see a shark fin like waveform um, on your waveform capnography that'll tell you that they're having an exhalation issue. And then increase in metabolism as well. We see this most often in ROSC. You're working a cardiac arrest, the first sign that you got your patient back may be a rapid spike in their end title. Um, so that tells us that all their little cellular engines are starting to work again. They're starting to get perfused. All of the CO2 that is built up in their body is now finally able to be released. We don't have to balance that out. It will do it on its own over time if we're ventilating um, appropriately. So really important to understand that all three of these things play a part here, that your patient's end title might not just be low because they're breathing fast. It might also be low because they're poorly perfused, right? Or it might be high because of a low respiratory rate or because they're retaining air in their lungs, right? They're air trapping from bronchospasm. Um, there's a lot of factors here. Got to apply them all to each patient and make sure you're doing a thorough assessment.